Now, unfortunately, the reality does turn out to be a little bit more complicated than what I've actually just presented you with. In reality, the anti-node of the wave is not actually exactly aligned with the end of the pipe. In reality, the anti-node is a little bit outside the end of the pipe. And so we can account for this by taking, calling that length the end correction. So if we imagined a pipe which was closed at one end, then we've got an end correction at this end here. So if we consider the fundamental for this pipe, we've got a quarter of a wavelength going from the start of this end correction here to the end of the pipe. So we can write the length of the pipe plus the end correction is equal to lambda on four. If the pipe was open at two ends, then we'd have an end correction at both these ends here. So in that case, for the fundamental frequency, where remember we've got half a wavelength inside the pipe, we'd write L plus two times the end correction is equal to lambda over two. So now we can account for end effects if we measure a couple of different harmonics. So let's say we had this closed pipe if we just measured the first harmonic, we wouldn't know how big the end effects were. But if we measured the first harmonic and the third harmonic, in that case for the third harmonic, we've got L plus the end effects is equal to three lambda on four. And we actually have two equations that we can now solve simultaneously in order to work out the size of the end effects. So let's do that now. So let's look at the types of problems that we could solve with end effects. In an experiment, a student plays a 500 hertz note over the end of a tube submerged in water. As they slowly pull the tube up, they hear the first resonance when 15.6 centimeters of the tube sticks above the water and then the next resonance when 49.1 centimetres of the tube sticks above the water. A. What is the speed of sound? And B. How large are the end effects? Okay, so they're going to hear the first resonance if we've got water here, and here's the tube, and we've got a quarter of a wavelength there. So we'll have lambda over 4, is equal to the length of the tube, let's call that L1, plus the end corrections. Let's just refer to the end corrections as E here. And then they continue to pull it up and they hear another resonance at some point like this. And at this point, we've got, let's call this L3, and they've got three quarters of a wavelength there. So three lambda over four is equal to L3 plus E. And L1 is given in the question, that's the shortest length here, the 15.6 centimetres. And L3 is also given in the question as 49.1 centimetres. Okay, so to answer this first one, what's the speed of sound? We know the frequency, so we can use V equals F lambda to find the speed if we know the wavelength. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually solve this equation and this equation simultaneously. So let's call this equation one and this equation two. And what we'll do is we'll do equation two minus equation one. So that gives us three lambda over four minus lambda over four. And on the right hand side, we've got L3 plus E minus L1 plus E. Now the nice thing about doing it this way is that these E's, the end corrections, are going to cancel out. So three quarters of a wavelength minus a quarter of a wavelength gives us half a wavelength and the E's cancel out and this is L3 minus L1. And we've got numbers for these guys which we can substitute in now. So 49.1 minus 15.6 and solving that, we end up with 33.5 centimetres. So that tells us that the wavelength is double this, two times this, so 67 centimetres. And so V is equal to 500 
times the wavelength, which is 0 0.67 meters. So this is in meters and this is in per second. And so this gives us 335 meters per second, which is a re reasonable speed of sound. That would be a coldish day. Okay, and then part B says how large are the end effects. So now we're asked to calculate E. If we look at equation 1, we now know everything in equation 1 apart from E. So let's rearrange it to make E the subject. We've got E, the end effects, is equal to lambda over 4 minus L1. Lambda over 4, well we've got lambda over 2 is 33.5. So that is 0 0.335 on 2 minus L1, which is 15.6, or 0 0.156 if we're going to deal with meters. Yeah, and this is equal to 0 0.0115, and that's in meters, or we could write it in centimeters, so well, that's meters, which is equal to 1.15 centimeters is another way to express that end effect. Now the size of the end effect is independent of the frequency of the wave that we input. It does, however, depend on the pipe that we're using. People have done lots of experiments and they found that a rule of thumb is that the size of the end effects is about 0.6 times the radius of the pipe. So this is a useful rule of thumb to use. Now when you're doing your investigation to measure the speed of sound, you should try and account for those end effects. So have a think about what they're going to do, how they're going to change your results, so how you can account for them in your calculation of the speed of sound. Okay, let's do a practice problem with end effects now. 